Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So this is a continuation of my previous episode, and um, that was episode number uh, 45, uh, titled HRF Sensitivity, minus uh, 135 dBm. So, um, of course, you are free to, to watch that episode, but this is a continuation of that. So let me recap very quickly what I did. I wanted to check basically what was the weakest signal that could be copied by the HRF. So I used my signal generator here, the SDG1032X. And at the moment it's configured to produce um, a beacon basically. So it's a, a sinusoidal wave that stops uh, for one second and then starts again for one second. So it cycles uh, uh, every two seconds. And uh, this is at minus 55 uh, dBm. And the signal is going through uh, this 30 dBm attenuator, another 30 dBm, uh, uh, dBm attenuator, and this coupler uh, set up as a 20 dB attenuator. So for a total of 80 dB of attenuation. So at the moment we are getting a signal that is uh, minus 135 uh, uh, dBm inside uh, the HRF. Okay? And in the previous episode I showed that uh, this signal can uh, be uh, indeed uh, copied. Uh, as you can see here on the waterfall, we, we can see this uh, intermittent signal here. And if I start the audio, you can probably hear, uh, hear the signal, okay? Um, Right, so this was what I presented in my previous video. Uh, let me stop here and let me disable SD Arranger for a second. And then I share this video, of course, in my channel, but also on, uh, I, I, I posted this on, uh, on Reddit uh, and, um, and I got a lot of uh, useful uh, comments, uh, especially in uh, amateur radio. I got uh, really a lot of comments and suggesting some, uh, well, some suggestions, some comments, the first comment was that, uh, um, you know, uh, normally you consider the signal to be copied or properly received uh, only when uh, the audio that you get out, so the signal here, is uh, uh, the audio signal, the output, is at, at least 10 or 12 dB above uh, the noise floor. So we can have a look at uh, this data. Here in SD Arranger we have a power, a power meter uh, for the audio and as you can see from the low that is the the noise floor and the high so the signal we just have a couple maybe three dB okay so that's not uh, to be considered good so let me uh, actually increase the power here I'm now going to uh, 41 dBm here um, such a minus 41 in such a way that we are getting minus 141 uh, uh, sorry minus 121 uh, dBm inside the HRF which means S1 uh, in terms of uh, ham radio measurement of the signal and as you can see here now we are getting our plus dB or plus 12 so the HRF can definitely according to this uh, specification uh, copy a signal that is uh, S1 okay uh, minus uh, 121 uh, dBm. Fine. Uh, another comment, however, uh, that, oh, yeah, let me actually uh, let you hear the, the audio um, just to show. So, of course. It's uh, very easy to hear now. It's completely audible. Okay. But another comment that I thought uh, was very interesting, so let me uh, reactivate uh, uh, the browser for a second, uh, came in this other Reddit, a uh, ham radio, and this guy said, okay, it looks uh, like indeed the HRF uh, performs uh, similarly to uh, expensive HF transceivers in a, lab, uh, in a lab test scenario, like the one that I did. However, in reality, uh, HRF uses 8-bit uh, sampling, okay? The HRF is indeed... Uh, 8-bit uh, uh, software defined radio and 8-bit means that uh, the receiver can see only about 45 dBm below the stronger signal in, uh, in the band okay and this is actually kind of mathematically justified by the theory here so this is the Wikipedia page for quantization and um, 
So quantization is uh, the problem, basically. Uh, so here we have, um, uh, let's say, a signal, the green uh, line. And when we sample it uh, with um, digital, uh, so analog, of the analog to digital converter, like in SDR radios, we only are approximating the, uh, the, the true value by some degree, OK? That uh, the lower the number of bits you have, uh, the larger is the approximation. So further away from the green line it is. And this uh, amounts really to adding some noise, you see? It's like this uh, yellow signal is like the green signal plus uh, some noise. And mathematically speaking, of course, you can model uh, some noise in um, a couple, a few ways. Uh, but anyway, you get at the end of this formula that the noise floor that you get, the signal to noise ratio rather, is uh, sixth multiplied by the number of bits. So in the case of uh, the HRF, Q is uh, uh, eight. So we get 48 here. And in the case of a sine wave, we add 1.7. So let's say about uh, 50. And so what uh, this, uh, this guy was saying is that, yeah, we cannot hear uh, below 40, uh, 45 or 50 dBs uh, below strong signals. And the problem is that on uh, close to ham radio ban uh, bands, there are kilowatts of broadcast stations. And so this is going to mess up uh, uh, the quality of the signal received by the HRF. And so I thought this was uh, very interesting, uh, interested, uh, interesting, sorry. And so I decided to, to try to, to model this. And so uh, let me show you what uh, I'm going to do. With this uh, signal generator, it's possible to produce another, as you can see, there are two channels. And I can produce another very strong signal on channel two. But this signal generator also offers the possibility of uh, directly in, uh, sending uh, the output of channel two uh, to make, to add it uh, to what is uh, currently already channel one. So let me be more clear about it. So if I activate this, uh, this option, so um, let me see utility, output setup, uh, wave combine, like that. And uh, let me go back to uh, uh, SDR Angel. Um, now you see that we have this very, very strong signal um, at uh, uh, 21.45 megahertz. Our signal is instead at 21.40. So I decided to put this uh, very strong signal uh, uh, only 50 kilohertz away from the, the main signal. But you, as you can see here, we are still copying pretty fine. Okay, so and, uh, and we are also having basically this uh, almost, let's see, 10 dBs. Yeah, so, um, so let me actually let you hear the the audio uh, here so it's absolutely clear on the waterfall but also you can hear it from the speaker okay and this uh, despite the presence of this uh, very strong signal here um, so it's not true it's not true that the HRF uh, is going to be let's say overwhelmed uh, by strong signals uh, nearby. And I would like to understand uh, why, but maybe I will do that in another episode. Uh, but for the moment, I just want to show you that indeed we are getting these two signals um, combined. And the stronger signal is uh, 60 dB uh, above, uh, uh, about 60 dB or 55 above the, uh, the uh, intermittent signal that we were listening on SDR Angel. So I'm, for this, I'm going to use my spectrum analyzer. So let me uh, connect uh, the signal there to the spectrum analyzer and activate, uh, uh, yeah, here the spectrum analyzer display. Okay, so it's here. Uh, let me increase it slightly so you can see very well. Okay, there was a reset. So let me go frequency. I'm going to set 21.4. Okay. And as a span, I'm going to write, uh, uh, let's say, 100 kilohertz. OK, or in fact, let me do 120 so uh, we get all we want. OK, so we have uh, our uh, uh, signal here, the strong signal. And uh, that is uh, um, at uh, minus 65, 65 dBms, OK? And this is indeed uh, true because uh, on channel two, I'm configure, I configure the, the signal generator to produce a signal of uh, 15 dBm. 
So 15 minus uh, 80 equal minus 65, okay? So our strong signal is indeed at minus 65 and the frequency is at uh, 21.45 kilohertz. And um, right, so let me reactivate uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer. Um, our signal, the intermittent signal that we could hear with the HRF, uh, sits at uh, 21.40. And uh, around here, okay. At the moment, it's completely buried uh, under the um, the noise because the signal is at about. Uh, we know it's at, at about minus one hundred and twenty-one, and the noise floor at the moment is uh, too high. Okay, so let me reduce the span uh, to ten kilohertz, and let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, right, so now the noise floor, so let me actually activate some uh, averaging, so we improve uh, the signal to noise ratio, oh yes, and also let me uh, disable the modulation, um, the, the signal at the moment is doing this high for one second, low for one second, so let me disable that, so uh, it's easier to spot on the uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay, and uh, so we should get a signal here at uh, uh, minus, uh, uh, basically here. So this is our signal, is just uh, uh, at the noise level. So I have to reduce further the bandwidth to see it uh, better. Uh, so let me put a bandwidth of just one kilohertz. And... Uh, uh, resolution bandwidth of one kilohertz wait a second I don't know uh, wait a second I'm so let me put auto oh yes sorry I should have put the span to one kilo not the, the resolution bandwidth okay that uh, is what I wanted to do and now we are we are after a few iterations so let me reactivate uh, the averaging uh, yeah it's already active um, after a few iterations, we will see our signal sitting indeed at uh, minus 121 uh, dB, as I said, okay? So this is an S1 um, a signal. Uh, again, I showed this in my previous video, but let me show you again. Eh? So if you go to Wikipedia and write S1 meter, mm -hmm. So we, you get uh, this conversion table, and indeed S1 uh, means uh, minus 121, okay? So this is uh, what, um, what we have at the moment uh, here, as you can see, or up there. So yeah, we have our uh, weak signal, at, uh, it's an S1 or minus uh, 121, a very, very strong signal uh, just nearby, 50 kilohertz uh, nearby, but still the DRF can, uh, can copy that signal without any problems. Okay, so that's all for this video. I uh, hope uh, you enjoyed. And uh, if you have any comments, please uh, feel free to comment in the section below so also other people can, uh, can uh, benefit from them. Bye-bye. Uh,